Ronnie, great to talk to you as always. Uh, look, um, this, this coming off of this this three game set in Milwaukee, not good. I mean, the team looked flat, looked listless. Uh, offense finally shows up in the last game. Bullpen implodes. The starting pitching has not been good. Uh, please take us off the ledge here, Ronnie, and give us a reason why we think that the Mets could still be good. Boomer, 155 to go. I know you guys in the football play, you know, what, a half dozen games or so a year. Yeah. But 155 <laughs> games to go. And uh, I, I think they're they're going to be fine. Um, Milwaukee uh, surprised me how many good young players uh, they have that I have not seen play a lot. Um, so they've got a future there in, in Milwaukee. But, uh, I, I mean, I remember uh, – in 1986, the Mets went two and three, I think, in the first five games. And the New York Post said the, the Mets are done. So, you know, it's happened before. It'll happen again. But I, I, I have confidence team, this team's going to have a good year. I don't want to say that it's over. I, I'm, I'm a realist. <laughs> but, I, you know, I'm not, Frank the, I'm not Frank the Tank, okay? I mean, but, okay. I, I, but I have to say $333 million payroll. I mean, the amount of money that's being spent, the expectations that come along with that. Unfortunately, injuries have hit the Mets already early this season. Uh, any update that you have on Justin Verlander and how significant of an injury is it from a pitching perspective? Well, that's a great question. Uh, um, you know, as far as the injury is concerned, if it had been um, the minor uh, part, that's usually where the rotator cuff is. And Boomer, I don't know if you ever had any rotator cuff injuries, but those are serious for anyone who's trying to make a living throwing. But the major part is really like a an armpit, back, um, scapula kind of deal that's uh, uncomfortable. Certainly if it was October 15th, uh, you would throw and throw effectively. Um, but you don't want to start the season with a nagging injury that will somehow turn into uh, uh, something more serious just because – the throwing motion, you compromise that. Next thing you know, there's something wrong with your elbow or that. So I think that's why they're being overly uh, cautious. Um, I'm glad that you're not counting the season out. But <laughs> I, do know, I do know this, Boomer and Gio, is that uh, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Steinbrenner in the 70s, that if you have a, a large payroll and you go after some of the high-name uh, prospects, free agents, and even, you know, Correa, they didn't get, I mean, he could have been here. There's so much pressure that dollars have to equate with wins. Like you only can be happy if you have a $400 million payroll and you win 115 games. Well, that's probably not going to happen, but I think what you do do with a uh, high payroll is you put yourself in position to play postseason baseball. And that's, uh, uh, that, if it did not happen, would be a huge disappointment. All right, tell me why I shouldn't be very concerned with Max Scherzer. I know his history. He's a Hall of Famer. He's won Cy Youngs. But in recent memory, Braves last year, terrible. Padres last year, terrible. First start uh, this year, not so good. Last start against Milwaukee, terrible. So, I mean, I I've got legit concerns that, that this guy's not going to be the guy that we thought we were signing. Yeah, well, I, I, will, I will say this, is that the start of Miami, uh, lesser degree, the start against Milwaukee, uh, he really ran into trouble in the sixth inning, the last inning that he was out there on the mound. So um, I think that as pitchers get older, and you guys talked about um, the strengths of this team, weaknesses, but it's also an older team. Um, Max has been so good for so long that I think a lot of times we tend to think that, all right, what we're looking at is what we're going to look at forever. And that's not always the case. So maybe they're going to have to reassess right now about um, how they're going to pitch him in April. And maybe they're a little more careful uh, around the 80 or 85 pitch mark, as opposed to always just assuming he's going to be awesome for a hundred until he gets into the swing of things during the season. And then I, I, I mean, if, if you can't get Max Scherzer this year, then you'd have some big problems. Oh God, I, don't even, if, don't even if, go that way. Ronnie. I if, oh. if I have to, I mean, if I have to bet on anyone, if I have to count on anyone, um, I'm going to count on Max Scherzer. He just finds a way. Uh, Francisco Alvarez expected to officially be called up with a Navarez injury where he's going to be out eight or nine weeks. I know they didn't want him on the team this early because he would have come north with the team. So what do you think Buck's plan for Francisco Alvarez is going to be? Well, they're, they're going to have to play him a lot, and they're going to have to have him out there and consider him you know, not as someone they're going to hide until they can send him down to AAA. Narvaez's injury 
is a two month or more injury, a high cap, a high grade cap strain. So he's part of the ball club. And, you know, sometimes you would love to have a perfect plan to bring up a player when you think it's the perfect time, but that doesn't always work that way. And listen, um, he, he is going to be thrown into the fire and he has all the tools that you're supposed to have. And yes, you hate to have to watch him kind of learn how to catch. Uh, in the big leagues or, or catch better in the big leagues, but it's time to, to let him swim. And I, I don't understand why they wouldn't do anything other than that. I think Nito will probably play today because it's opening day and the pageantry and all the stops and starts that sometimes happen. Uh, but Alvarez is going to be in there and he's going to be in there a lot. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be, or to me, he'll be in, in soon time, your, your number one, a catcher, certainly. 